Hey guys, welcome back to another Gaming Memories video. Here we are taking a look at Hot Wheels Extreme Racing that was published by THQ in 2001. And this game is a very different style of game compared to the original Hot Wheels Turbo Racing that was released back in 1999 for the PS1. I have done a previous video on it, I'll make sure to leave a link down to that video in the description so that you can go and check it out. But the differences between this game and the previous game is that they were both created by two totally different developers and studios as with the original game was published by electronic arts and this game was published by thq so they had a very different concept in terms of what way they wanted to take the franchise and the game itself compared to the original game didn't receive as well reviews compared to the first title it's got mixed average reviews at best in most cases only averaging around 50 percent and it was due to a lot of different reasons with the gameplay mechanics and the visual quality and style of the game as it was very very different from that of the original game but like the first game you do have access to a number of tracks and different types of vehicles that are licensed and based off a lot of the replica toy models that would have been popular at that time from the Hot Wheels franchise but the premise of this game is more of a car combat style game almost in the likes of twisted metal but more or less down to a point of like crash team racing or even a mario kart style format where you're driving around tracks with the intention to win the races but you have to use any type of power-ups or anything that you can utilize to your advantage to win the races but what's very different about this game is it's kind of an all-in-one style game where you're racing around different types of vehicles all within the one race so you have access to different upgrades which you can later purchase and gain access to as you play through the game and each vehicle has its own unique quirks and handling characteristics but even with the upgrades that are available they change the look and feel of the car but not only that with each vehicle you do have the ability throughout the races to transform into different types of vehicles anything from like road going vehicles or off road to jet style planes or even jet boats depending on the environment in which you're racing through at that given time so with each track you are racing on different types of terrain anything from land sea and air all within the one race it's a unique kind of concept but it's not executed as well as it probably could have been as of playing this video this is also my first playthrough of the game itself and having played through it it plays decent enough for what it is but comparing this to the original title which again I did cover in the last video I enjoyed the original game a lot more it was it was a lot more fun in it the graphics I thought were genuinely better and there was a lot more quirkiness to the game in terms of the graphics and just the look and feel of the overall playability of the game this one doesn't seem to really have that as much now it's not to say that it's a bad game but it does reflect off of a lot of the reviews and scores that it got from back in the day where this game really would make the most of would be its multiplayer element as it does have access to different style of tracks and if you have a few friends to play you definitely can have a bit of a laugh with this because because there's enough here to keep you going but the difference here is that it's not really as different compared to very similar style of games but what makes it different is the fact is you have access to different types of vehicles which you can change into at different points in the race so it changes the look and feel and the dynamic of how the games are played throughout as such so when you're on land you're bouncing over jumps and trying to go up mountains and different types of treacherous terrain whereas when you change into like some of a ship where you're flying in the air it definitely changes the handling physics of the vehicle and the same can be said then when it transitions into a boat again it has a bit more twitchiness to the controls it's something that can definitely take a bit of getting used to you're just getting familiar with one and then it changes into another and you have to get used to that really quick as well and in order to maintain your position in the race you do have to adapt very very quickly which for a lot of players especially if you're beginners and you're not really good at these type of games there is a level of frustration that will be seen because of that adaption that I found anyway at least but as with a lot of the other style of games this game also does have its own tournaments and different modes that you can play and get used to throughout the course of play and you do unlock different perks and different graphics and even with some of the weapons that you do have but I even find that sometimes with the weapons they're not really as as usable as you would expect some of the weapons that I found that you use 
dudes in the game didn't have the same level of impact as other weapons. Like if you had a machine gun and if you were close to someone you could do serious damage and them would be the same to you. They could kill you literally instantly with it. But then you have other types of weapons that even though you use them they don't really do too much and if your opponent is too far away from you it's very very hard to really gain any advantage with them. A lot of the time you just have to utilise just your skill and just racing and even taking advantage of some of the shortcuts and different areas that you can explore through each of the races. The only kind of gripe that I would have is the fact is that the game can be a bit fiddly at times even with the level of the AI because even though you're winning a race outright you'll never truly get away from the likes of your opponents and even if you do win there's very very little in terms of the distance that you would get away from but in most cases what I found through a lot of attempts and races was even though I'd be a good bit ahead and literally within the last second or two around the corner an opponent would literally just zip past you and cross the finish line without you even knowing that he was even there so that adds to the level of frustration even though you've driven really well throughout the race and you haven't made any mistakes and yet they can still overtake you at any time when they wish so that can definitely make the gameplay overall very frustrating for most players now it's definitely not the best racer in the system but i can see what it was trying to do it was trying to be a bit of everything but it just doesn't execute it as well as it probably should have done even with the likes of the graphics on the actual vehicles themselves like even the likes of the car models like the car models the top half is in 3d but when you look at the likes of the wheels on the ground they're more like 2d sprites but they're animated to look like they're 3d whereas when you look at the original game in the series all the models were all full 3d which was very different but I suppose it was just a different angle and a different way they wanted to take the franchise and again because it was from a different developer and a different publishing company they would have had different ideas of where they wanted it to go. And it's not to say it's the worst racing game but it definitely isn't as good as the original in my opinion. Now it is playable and if you are a fan of the Hot Wheels franchise and you like these type of games and even just that kind of era of the Hot Wheels toys, even the more futuristic kind of style games or even toys themselves, this might be worth a look at. Even just for a few quick playthroughs but you would get more fun out of it if you're just playing with your mates but if you have played this game i would love to know your thoughts on it if you have experienced it and if so what did you think of it did you enjoy it or did you find it really frustrating to play be sure to share it down in the comments below so if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of these different types of videos where i do explore a lot more of these unique and quirky style games that were released on the ps1 where i do share my thoughts and experiences with everyone make sure to leave a like on the video make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be updated whenever future videos are released and also do feel free to have a look around the channel as i do have other videos and gameplay style reviews showcasing a lot of other similar games that were released only on the ps1 so as always make sure to keep playing those classic games and enjoying them and keep those gaming memories alive